Welcome back everybody, my name is Robert Doman and in this GB Studio tutorial video we're going to be looking at GB Studio 4.2 I believe. It is a new update for GB Studio and there's some fantastic changes, it has a new logo thing. Feels like GB Studio 5, uh, they haven't changed too much, maybe I'm, be maybe I'm exaggerating. Uh, but we're going to look over the change list and look at some of those changes in GB Studio to uh, get you uh, excited about this new version of GB Studio. Remember, it's uh, it's actually open source, so you should support the creators of it by uh, donating to them, either on the itch page or Patreon or however they however they say. So I got this change log up here, which is on the GitHub, and that is where you find this new version. It is a pre-release, meaning it's not technically done. Uh, if we ever look at the uh, itch page, then it's still showing the 4.1.3. So remember, as always, if you're going to be migrating your project into GB, into an, any other version of GB Studio, to make a backup, what I do is simply zip up the folder that the game and the project is in, and that creates a duplicate, which is zipped up. And then you can go ahead and make the changes to the to the file or whatever, and you can always unzip it and have the untouched ones again. Uh, that's my way of doing it. You could also make your own GitHub repository and make sure you always have uh, revisions and versions of your project and game. Probably the smart way to do it. I might make a video of that uh, in the new year. But yeah, just be careful when migrating a project. Sometimes things go wrong, especially if it's a beta version like this one is. So as ever, the way you find this is you go to the GitHub, which you can get there's a link to on gbstudio.dev. Uh, forward slash docs, I believe, top right, they say uh, GitHub. And then on the very right here, it has releases and then you click on the plus 24 right now, and then it takes you to every single release of GB Studio ever. And the one at the top is the one we care about. So let's get reading this change log and I'll hop into GB Studio to show you it when I think there's something important. There is so much stuff here. Uh, there's the added, the changed, and the fixed. I went through some of the fixed and I have experienced these bugs, but you know when you use something for so long, you just get used to it and you just live with it. It's nice that they're actually fixing some of those things because I've gotten used to them. Um, some things are actually crashed the the game or like I'd have to restart my computer um, when I'm building or because it doesn't want to build. Uh, I think that most of that's fixed. I imagine it, there will be other things that need fixing in the actual release of this. So remember, take everything with a pinch of salt. But let's have a looky-see. Let's looky through this uh, change log here. Uh, the first thing that they've added, uh, the first thing that in the list is adding constant values. So uh, apparently it doesn't use any extra memory when used in game. So this would be fantastic for things like um, if you have a constant value for, for example, a score or how long a day takes in your game, something that you never want to update and you don't need to adjust at any point during the gameplay and you can have it in the constants. Let's jump over to GB Studio and see what that looks like. So on the very left here, down at the very bottom, we have variables like usual and then we have constants and they've got a uh, They've got the engine constants right here. So like the platform plus plugin stuff, which we'll get to shortly. Um, so you can say if something shouldn't ever change, which fantastic. That means you don't have to worry about accidentally change it, changing it during runtime. I'd call that a win. Um, you can select all of the scenes by, can, by doing control A. And then that means you can move them all at once, I guess. Very helpful. Um, there's a plugin manager. Let's have a quick look at that. Now, I don't think you can see what I'm doing, but if I click plugins at the very top of my screen, like the file, edit, etc., plugins, plugin manager, it brings up this window, which then you can look at all your plugins in one place. Add to project, for example, down here. Fantastic. Being able to do this. Being able to search for, for them as well. 
absolutely brilliant. I can't believe we didn't have this before. There's so much stuff in this that we just like lived without. So it's amazing that we finally have this kind of stuff. Um, let's keep looking through. Run from here. So you can start playing a scene wherever you want. So if I right click the space battle, I can click run scene f or run from here. And then instead of having to set my start location to this scene and mess up the actual game, uh, I can just right click it and say run from here. And uh, basically it just speeds up testing. That's all it needs to do. And uh, other game engines do it, so why couldn't this one? So look, see, boom, wonderful. So yeah, that's an absolute winner. Uh, if anyone's ever had any problems with having too many projectiles, they're helping us with that right now. The ability to change the collision layer opacity, that is a, a, a nice little help. Let's have a quick look at that. So if I zoom in on this one here, let's have a look at these options. So as you can see, you got the slider and I can make it invisible or solid. Another really useful thing is that when you make custom scripts and you wanna call that event or that script, you can just start typing the name that you called that script rather than having to type in call script and then select it from the dropdown, which is lovely. I uh, I always accidentally type in the name of that script I, I wrote. So this will definitely speed up my uh, process. There's a setting for toggling the Game Boy Color correction to show how it will appear on modern hardware. I think this is one of the reasons why my game Office Combat looked kind of like cool, like on uh, in the browser, is because the the actual colors it was showing were different than the ones I was seeing when I was trying to make it. And it was like a happy accident. So look, color correction is set to none. And then let's go back out and look. The colors are much brighter and unnatural, I would call them. They're less muted. So uh, yeah, this is more like the modern hardware will be showing. Well, if we turn it off again, it will be more like you'd actually see on the Game Boy Color. Because the Game Boy Color couldn't actually um, show that many colors. It was uh, limited by to like 255 maybe. Um, but obviously modern hardware can have almost infinite. I uh, don't know if that's true. Oh, thousands, probably. There's also uh, changes to like you can oh, you can make certain scenes color only. Basically, go crazy on editing the game. It seems like oh, everything here is supporting us developers in editing GB Studio in almost any way we can um, from the engine, rather than from editing any of the engine scripts you eject. For example. Here's one that's quite interesting. Add globals.i file when exporting ROM containing all variable addresses. Allows in integration with emulators such as Godot Boy for handling achievements and other game slash ROM interactions. Uh, this might be a secret, um, really good one. Uh, because it, where, the reason why we want to worry about Godot Boy is because we can get our games on Steam. And uh, hopefully I'm going to be doing that with Skelost very soon. Once I do, I will definitely try and give you guys a tutorial on that. And uh, if GB Studio 4.2 helps that be better, then I'll definitely be using that. And yeah, there's there's just so many here, guys. Like, um, I'm gonna I might have to call it here, but like, I'll quickly go over some without showing you. Like the idea that you can edit the scene type settings from the scene sidebar rather than needing to go into the settings page. Uh, the camera locking, having more options. Platformer Plus now basically being built into GB Studio, which includes moving platforms and uh, double jumping, coyote time, all that cool stuff that we love from Platformer Plus. Setting camera bounds from uh, from the scene settings, from like when you click on a scene. Positioning actors using their pixel coordinates rather than just by tiles, which is fantastic because before, if you wanted to set it specifically to a pixel location, you had to do it at like scene initiate, which is a bit weird. So this helps with that. Uh, the one, a huge one, I might, I definitely have to show you this actually, is the ability to change the canvas origin point when editing sprites. Let's look at that in GB Studio right now. 
So the reason why this is so important is because when I was making that Zelda um, tutorial series a while ago now, uh, the player couldn't be like the the scene or like the the camera was weird because it was following the origin of the of the player here so for example let's try and get this one uh and if i wanted a sword to swing for example let's do this let's make it a bit bigger if i wanted a sword to swing i wanted the player in the very middle let's uh increase this out and kind of size again I wanted the player in the very center, and then I would have the sword swing to the right, up, left, or down of it. And I couldn't really do that because the camera was still following this point here. But now we can move this uh, origin, which hopefully means that the camera will follow this specific point. Um, and we can still animate around it. So finally, we might have we might be able to make Zelda-like games even cleaner and better, right? So uh, yeah, wonderful stuff. I had to show you that, so I'm I'm very glad they did that. Uh, adventure mo mode has gotten a lot better too. You can now make um, actors solid, and you can have rounded edges, uh, so that like when you walk into an edge, you don't just stop. It like pushes you around it. I'll show you. It's a bit bit funky. So to show you, I'll update this scene to adventure mode. And here's an example of like using the cog to like change everything. But yeah, let's update the edges of the collision of the trees. So if we have a look and we use the magic wand tool, let's make all the trees rounded. And then let's, let's press run from this scene. Scene mode, run from here. And I'll show you how the player now interacts with these rounded edges in adventure mode. It's better than it was. Uh, I'd say it's still not perfect, but I think it's fine. It's good. It's better than it was. We're moving towards being able to make really um, clean and interesting Zelda games. Uh, so let's have a look. Let's see. And I hope this is clear what's happening right now. It's like I'm walking against an edge. Um, and then it's pushing me around it. So that's how you can expect corners, rounded edges to work in GB Studio adventure mode now. And just as a reminder, adventure mode lets you move in eight directions like this. And one last thing in this, um, in the added thing, in the added column of this uh, new GB Studio update is the automatic tile flip setting, uh, meaning you can make scenes that look more complicated than we could before um, by them automatically optimizing tile sets so you can, that basically visually flips um tiles the background tiles of a scene so uh you can get more you can basically squeeze more intrigue out of your out of your tile sets and your background tiles so everything's beautiful i'll quickly look through the change to see if there's anything worth shouting to you or oh, the first one the show connections you remember when i made the video about um how many scenes can you have in gb studio and i was like maybe more than 100 but because any more than that and it goes really slow this is imp this is implying that it won't be as slow anymore so we could have more than hundreds of scenes which is awesome really um it basically means that it won't take forever to do everything uh it's also saying that it's fixed some um ladders and one-way platforms I found a lot of issues with that personally, so I'm glad that they've addressed it. And yeah, they basically did loads of good work and updated and stuff, fixed loads of things. So uh, on that note, I'll say thank you to Chris Maltby and all the other uh, developers working on the open source GB Studio project. 
Thank you so much for the update. Merry Christmas, I suppose. And I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you so much for you guys. You guys are the absolute best. Remember to like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you want to see next, what you thought of this one. I have a Patreon, so uh, please support me there if you want to. Um, I'm hoping to make more videos next year. I've been very busy making games this year, but hopefully I can balance it a bit better. Um, as I do it really enjoy making these videos, and I have a lot to share, I just haven't been sharing it, so uh, let me know if you want to see it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.